Good morning, church. Good morning. It is so good to see you here today in the house of the Lord. Um, it, is, it is good to be together on this a little bit cooler, but maybe a little bit more pleasant uh, fall season of the year. Uh, we do have a couple of, of special things coming up and still some things that we're working on for the end of the year. Uh, anybody agree this has been a tough year? It's been a tough year. Thankfully, if, if nothing else goes wrong <laughs> or in a negative fashion, 2020 will be over soon. So, you know, if we have to write it off, then there's always fresh hope for tomorrow. So that's what we have in God. But we do have some things that are coming up that I think will make the end of the year special. Um, usually what we have uh, every year, uh, we usually have Evangelist Busolo come to us. He will be here next week, so he will be speaking to us in our morning service. And I believe for the first time, at least in the, in the, in the morning service, um, Ben Rushton will be speaking to us on November the 15th. So um, he's, he's, a minister, he's a ministerial candidate now working on his, his uh, licensing and ordination. So I said, well, then it's time to get you to start preaching, buddy. So he said, in his very elaborate fashion, okay. <laughs> So we will look forward to that coming up in just a few weeks. So um, do, do please uh, be praying for, for this end of the year. Pray. Um, as we always know, the, the, the holiday season is difficult for people. And, and we already having, um, at least on a national level, let's say just give up Thanksgiving. That's, that's hard. That's, that's really difficult when we love and thrive on being together with family. So there, there will be those that will be more alone this year. So let's pray for each other. Let's pray for our community and all those that, that in some way this season will still be special and meaningful to them and certainly not a greater occasion for loneliness. Because God, God has given us His Son. He has given us life. And so we want to celebrate that. Would you please stand with me as we open this service up for, in prayer and in worship. Almighty God, Lord, we are your children. We are the sheep of your pasture. So what we do, dear God, not as, as the ones in charge, but rather the ones following, being led, and being ministered to, our eyes look up to you. Our spiritual heart is opened to the move and to the direction and to the instruction of Almighty God. Lord Jesus, there are challenges. Dear God, for some, there's challenges they've never faced before. There's difficulties that they've never had before. And we still as a nation and as a smaller community, we're facing an unprecedented things we've never, ever had to go through before. But God, you have taken us through so many of these difficult months. You have still blessed us. You have still answered our prayers. You have still ministered to us. And dear God, we have survived. And in some ways, we've still thrived, even in the midst of it. So God, we look to you again. Not resting on our ability or on our goodness, but rather, God, depending on your grace and on your mercy. So, dear God, I thank you for every worshiper that has come into this house. And I thank you for what they brought, for they don't bring weak faith. They bring a strong faith into your house today. And anything that has come against them, that is fighting against that, we pray in this hour, that battle will be settled. That their enemy will be pressed down and they will feel the liberty that only Jesus can bring. Dear God, in our songs, I pray that you'll hear joy. I pray that you'll hear thankfulness and gratefulness. Dear God, in our prayers, I pray that you will hear our affections for the needs and our, our being touched like you are with the feelings of, of humanity's infirmities. And oh God, I pray that in all these things we will truly feel spiritually nourished and blessed. So that, dear God, we may have something for a world that is literally starving spiritually to death. Help us, oh God, to be healthy because healthy people can minister to the sick. So, Father, I ask that you to do your perfect work and all praise, glory, and honor be to our Lord Jesus Christ this day. We pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be in God's house with God's people and God's presence. Can you say amen again? Praise amen. God. It's good to see Brother Steve, Sister Beverly this morning. Our blessings and prayers are still with you. Uh, that's what it is being a family. And you're family. When one uh, is happy, everybody's happy. 
when one hurts or grieves, everybody does. But Amen. I'm, I'm glad to understand today that this is not the end as far as uh, God backing up, backing off. He's not. He's supreme, okay? It looks dark all around, but if we as Christians and His children keep following Him and lead, looking to the leadership of the Holy Spirit to guide us every day and protect us, God will be blessed and honored. Because he is honored and glorified through his children. So this morning, as we sing, we the question is put the song is put in the question, are you washed in the blood? You say, Oh yeah, I'm saved. I'm, I'm, I'm doing good, okay? Well, sometimes we may be testing that, but are you washed in the blood? Let's sing unto our Lord this morning. Have you been?
but she's singing a better song today. She's where she longed to be. Now, she loved her church, but she loved Jesus more. <laughs> and she is with Him. And she left a lot of good things behind, no treasure, but she also left that pain. She also left that sorrow. She also left that loneliness all behind. So, isn't this what we're here for today? I don't want to live here forever, but I want to go where she is. Hebrews chapter 12 says, We are encompassed by a great cloud of witnesses. So we got one other voice crying in our spirits, Keep on going. Keep on serving. Keep on working. It's worth it. Worth it for us all. So as we go to prayer, we certainly do want to lift up all those in our midst, including the Brown family who's, who's uh, uh, still experiencing loss. Uh, I, I, I've talked to... Um, the Jurbert family a couple of times this week and, and just heard from her today. Irvin Jurbert's back in, in the hospital and in the ICU unit. So he's he's not doing well at all. So we do want to lift him and his family up in prayer. Uh, are there other requests that you would like to, to make special note of today? Amen.
tell you what kind of man he was. He didn't have any children of his own, but he'd been keeping up three just because he loved them. And he left the will a life insurance for those kids till they turn 18 years old. God makes the difference, folks. Well, you tell us all this because you're my family, okay? And she's my family. You love my family. I love, I love all of you this day. But today I told this song uh, several reasons God gave it to me. I said, well, you know, that it hits the spot. And she, he told me, he said, you know Brother Tony likes that song. But we're going to sing the Haven of Rest. However, if you haven't anchored into that Haven of Rest today, the Bible tells us today is the day to do that. So let's, if you want to stand and worship, sit down and worship whatever you feel like doing. But the choir, which I'm like for this morning, uh, we're going to sing the Haven of Rest.
person. I'm not not on the water. That's that's not my that's not my thing. But I know about the anchors of life, and I have a feeling a lot in this house know exactly about that. When the storms come, you can do your best, but you can't control it. You just got to go along with it, and you don't know. You don't know how it's going to turn out. But I'm tell you what, that anchor it makes a difference. It holds throughout every storm that I have ever been through. And I have heard your testimonies. It's the same for you. Thanks be to God. There is a reason why the Bible says that this hope that we have is an anchor for our soul. Who's, you know, anchor has two ends. There's the one that holds you in place, but there's the one attached to you. But the anchor that we have attaches on the other side of the veil. That means it's to the very presence of God. And for you to be moved beyond where God wants you to be moved, God would have to be moved. So that's how secure you are in Him. So blessed be His holy name for all of His goodness. Um, before we get into the message this morning, I do want to say a special thank you to, to this church. Again, you, you gave us a very special Sunday, painless, I guess, as you could possibly make it. Um, Still didn't like it, but I, I do appreciate all the all the uh, the love that you showed, um, and you, you you showed it in extra fashion because as I uh, so accurately say, you show it all the time, and I just appreciate this church, and I appreciate certainly what you mean to us, but I appreciate what you mean to a whole lot of people um, because you definitely make an impact in that. And blessed be His name. Um, this was something I was going to speak on last week, but the Lord said, no, just no. I just want to do something different. So he did, and I thank God for his blessings last week. I believe people were touched and ministered to last week, and, and I believe he still has a message for us, I believe. He still wants to minister to us. I, I don't believe we have a God that's ready to beat on us. I believe we have a God that's ready to heal us. And I believe if we let him, he'll heal things we never thought could be healed, because that's the power of Jesus Christ. Ms. Lisa, I'll ask you to please come. She was so ready last week. I wish you could have seen her. I mean, she was ready. She had, she had to sit on this all week. But I, I looked at her just to make sure this one. She gave me the thumbs up. So she is still ready. Please, Miss Lisa, please come. Would you please stand for the reading of God's Word? Good morning. Good morning. Even with my ears stuffed full of stuff, I still have to it's a privilege to be here today. Amen. Hallelujah. And whenever you go through things like we've all been through this year, it makes you so thankful and so grateful Amen. for being in God's house. Amen. I know a lot of churches have closed, mm. but I pray that ours does not close. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We found my place. I had it in my other Bible, and I left my Bible at home, and I said, oh, my goodness. The devil's already working. I'm supposed to read Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 42. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him. And saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. Praise God. And then over in Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, and that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God, and he would go back to God, he riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. And I only want to say one thing, that what really stood out for me on this scripture was that Jesus was willing. Had he not been willing to do any of these things and go 
to the cross, things would be a lot different for all of us. Almighty God, speak to us from your word, and dear God, may we be changed into your perfect image. I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. I want to talk this morning about garbage people. Hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Garbage people. People that you wonder why are they in my life? Why are they around? I wish, I wish, you know, I kind of wish they were they would not be in my existence. They're, they're bothersome. They 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 get in my way. They disturb me. They 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 have issues. That, that I just I just don't want to deal with. I'd rather just go away and if I see them, hmm, I'm just going to pick another aisle and I'm just going to go in another way. Just, just garbage people that you don't know why are they eat. Oh. Oh, did y'all think I was talking about? Oh, no, no. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not talking about her. No, I'm not, that's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about people like, like this. Hey. Yeah, do you want to see Emerson? Yeah, she's going to be in your class. Say hi. Say hi. That's your new teacher. Nope, nope. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Max, come here. She wants to say hi to you. Hi. Do you need a kindergarten teacher? Miss Parker. Miss Pikel? Yeah. Say hi. Hi. This thing was just so terrible for the longest time. Uh, hello? <laughs> I think she's frozen. That looks creepy. <laughs> hey, Maddox, your new school teacher just FaceTimed me. She wants to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> say hi. Are you there? Yeah, say hi. Hi. Tell her about you. Why are you getting so shy? Hurry up. I have your new teacher on the phone. Come and say hi. What? Your new teacher. Come and say hi. Tell them your name. Hello. Chris, tell her, tell her your name. Chris, you have to tell her. Yes. Why are you crying? Tell her your name. Tell her your name. She's asking for your name. Chris. Chris. Now, if you don't know about this, if you don't know about TikTok, you're not looking, you're not missing anything. You're just really, really not. But there was a particular challenge that went out earlier in this year. And uh, they do a lot of a lot of these different challenges. And, and this particular challenge was, since we're going online, to be introduced to your new teacher. And so these parents took these pictures of people of, of, in mug shots or uh, people that are, that are handicapped in some way, and they've used those to scare their children, to make them feel uncomfortable, to make them, to make them react to these people's appearances. Um, I hope that that lady with the white shirt, I know it was backwards, I hope she had a really powerful lesson with her kid after that because it says, love everyone on her shirt while she's getting her kid to be creeped out by this real person. Um, these were not doctored, these were not altered, these were just real people. Now, the first person that I showed you now, now she is a person that has something to say to this. Her name is Lizzie. She's actually, her life became famous when somehow her picture got on the internet. And on the internet, you know what happens. Uh, she was labeled the world's ugliest person. And that went all over the world. So she went viral for being more ugly than anybody in the world. And the comments only got worse. In fact, one comment that she's never forgotten is, why don't you just do the world a favor and kill yourself? This is real people. This, they, they were not forced to do this. They did this. 
But I'm here to tell you, not one of those people that were made fun of are garbage people. Not one of them is worth throwing away. Not one of them is, is worth the ridicule of these innocent kids just wanting to meet their new teacher and being scared by another human that they could walk to in this plane. In fact, Lizzie had something to say about this herself. She is a Christian, and of course you can imagine what she's going through. And if we want to talk about privilege today, think about her life where she literally has a condition she can never gain weight. <clears throat> never, ever in her life. So she's not allowed that to, to bring her down. She has become an author. She's become a speaker. In fact, you can catch a, a TED talk by her on how do you define yourself. And she discern, determined, I'm not going to let the world define me. But she said about the Bible, I, I love God and I'm glad that I can get away with Him and I can talk to Him. And you can imagine she would have had to do that a lot. But she had something to say about, about this, this incident as well. So watch that. TikTok, I need your help. This trend where you are pretending to FaceTime someone who is either disabled or is a baby or is some crazy mugshot and you're showing it to someone to get their reaction and saying, oh, hey, talk to this person just to get a quick laugh. This is not funny. This is not a joke. If mom was showing her son a video of me or picture of me and saying, this is your teacher for the new school year, and he had a scared reaction on his face. If you are an adult who has a young human in your life, please do not teach them that being scared of someone who doesn't look like them is okay. Please. Everything that these kids need to know about having empathy and being kind to one another starts at home. Please. This is not okay. This is a trend that needs to stop because we are human and we have feelings. So just please. So teachers, the teachers that I have in here, I, I understand a little bit more of what you go through every day and why you go through so much to help these kids. Because we love to complain about all those bad kids out there, but I, I, you know something that all of us need to be aware of. Some of them can't help it because you don't know where they come from. Even these respectable parents are teaching their kids how to be afraid and to judge people solely on their appearance. And we think the kids are what is wrong with this world. But I'm here to tell you, there are no garbage people. We heard, we heard uh, the word of God today. Jesus, in his day, went to minister to people. Did he not? He came to minister to the world. He didn't come, and he didn't come to the, to the fashion section of Jerusalem. He didn't come to the Wall Street section of Jerusalem. He didn't come to the political theater of Jerusalem and say, okay, here's where I'm going to start my ministry. But Jesus went among those that other people would. In, in ancient times, uh, when you, you, you have garbage just like we have today, well, the garbage pile was outside of the city. Everything unclean was taken outside of the city. In fact, outside of the, the city of Jerusalem, it's pretty notable for us, there was a valley called the Valley of ben -Hanon. And it was a valley in the ancient times that had been used for child sacrifice. So nobody wanted to get on that property. It's like property I see going every time we go to Spartanburg where, where a mass shooting takes place. That building's still sitting there. Nobody's built anything. Nobody will do anything. It's just sitting there because there's such a stain about it. There's such a history to it. Nobody wants to touch it. Well, this valley turned into the city dump. It was the trash pile. It was where everybody would take their trash. It was where the refuse came. So it was always just, just a trash pile right outside the city. Well, Jesus used this word when he talked about being separated from God. When he talked about hell, he says Gehenna. That's the name that he used. And he was referring to that very place. Saying that hell is going to be the trash dump of the universe. He realized what was going on, and he nothing that he did was by accident. That's trash of a physical sort, but there's other things that were outside the city as well because they couldn't be associated with the normal people. They were unclean, and that was the lepers. The people who had a disease that could be caught, that, that could be passed on, something that, that affected probably their limbs, their, their, their sense of, of feel, their, their nerves, so that if they got injured, the gangrene would form, they would never know it. And so it's, it's a horrible, horrible disease, but the uncleanness of it was from the Old Testament law. So what did you do with them? You put them outside of the city. So in essence, these are... The trash of the world. You get them away from people. And even if you come close 
to, to the society. Scream to them, I am unclean. Literally, I am a garbage person. So that they would not be tainted by your presence. Connor, I want you to come. The leper broke protocol that we just read about. He didn't follow the law. He came, it says, and he came before Jesus. And as he came before Jesus, he realized who he was and what he was. See, this is what you get when you become a new pastor. <laughs> you don't pick on your family as much anymore. You pick on the new pastor. That's fun. That's fun. He came to Jesus, bowed down on his feet, and begged him, if you were willing. See, he even still put himself, I'm lesser. I don't matter. I'm nobody. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Now Jesus moved, but not the way you would expect. He didn't move away and say, you're unclean. Get away from me. He moved his hand, but not to push him. Not to say, get away from me, you filthy thing. I'm not here for you. That's not what the scripture records. The Bible says that when Jesus saw him, he went to him and though he could speak, though he could snap his finger, though he could twitch his pinky and the work would be done, the Bible says that he stretched forth his hand and he touched him. Giving a lesson to the disciples and across the ages. You are not garbage to me. You are not a trash person to me. You are valued so much that I just won't speak. I will lay my hand on you. And I'll give you worth. And the Bible says that he was cleansed. Cleansed by the touch of Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming. Jesus said there are no garbage people. Prostitutes, they are not garbage people. Gentiles, they are not garbage people. People that, 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 that are on the wrong side of the tracks, they are not garbage people. Those who are inflicted, those who are blind, those who come crawling into the sanctuary and begging for somebody to touch them, they are worth our time because there are no garbage people. No, there's not. Not, not Lizzie who was, who was created the way she was for a reason. Not the people that they made fun of. Or even the parents. There are no garbage people. Not tramps or thieves. Not adulterers or gay. Not trans or twisted. Not right or left. Not Trump and Pence. Nor Biden Harris. No one in Hollywood. No one in New York. No one from the elite class. No one among the homeless. Nobody in Beijing. Nobody in Iran. There are no garbage people. Amen. Jesus has said to His church, maybe the world don't get this, but that's okay. They're supposed to be blinded. Our eyes are open. The lesson is clear. The standard has been set, church. There are no garbage people. So if we believe that, you've got to stretch out your hand. If there are no garbage people, you can't ignore them anymore. You cannot say to those in need, I am not willing. Following Jesus, you must say, I am willing. And in His name, in His name, may you be set free. That's what Jesus is all about. Now, I did talk about the trash dump of eternity, didn't I? So let's deal with that one because I opened the door and so I don't want to leave it open. Isn't it true that there will be some people in a place called hell? And using Jesus' language of, of Gehenna, the trash dump of eternity. Won't there be people there? Yes. So does that mean ultimately there are garbage people? No. No. Because we just... We just Got that, that, we got that taken care of. Jesus said there are no garbage people by what he did, by what he said. There are no garbage people. 
But I do have to tell you, there are garbage hearts. Now, what's the difference, preacher? Well, I want to tell you the difference. You just, just hold on a second. I won't pick on condoms now. Well, Randy. Jesus, at the end of his ministry, he's facing Jerusalem, and you know why. I know why. He's going to die for everybody. He's again making that emphatic message God so loved the world that whoever, how many whoever's have we got in this place? I want to know. I see a bunch of whoever's in this place. I see some whoever's crossing by the street in front of us here. I see some whoever's in that school. I see some whoever's all out here. I see some whoever's in your neighborhood. I see some whoever's that I get mad at. I have some whoever's that I, oh, they get under my skin. But they're whoever's. So God sent His Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish. Perish is another word for going to the trash dump. They won't go to the trash dump, but they'll enter into eternal life. Where the angels, where the righteous, where the pure, where the beautiful are. Anybody can go? Yes. Let's grasp this this morning. There are no garbage people. Everybody you ever meet could make heaven their home for all eternity. None cast out of heaven except for the devil and his angels. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I really am. That's who it was made for. There are no garbage people. But the ruler of the universe, the one that said it's going to be king of all kings, lord of all lords, it says that when he came to this time, he looked at those followers of his, those that were right around him, and he said he loved them. They weren't just a hobby or, or a trinket to carry along with him as he did his ministry. He loved them. And he loved them to the very end. But he wasn't at the very end, was he? Because there's a, 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 a fly in the ointment there. In that beautiful picture, somebody walked in that room. It was dark. Their hearts were already shriveling under the power of saving himself. He had given his heart to the devil. And he was already in his heart. I'm going to betray. I am going to betray this man mm -hmm. to his enemies. But yet I'll walk through the door. Yet I'll eat his bread like nothing's wrong. Mm -hmm. I'll go through the pass over the death angel protecting us from I'll go into here acting like I am just another disciple. Mm -hmm. What did the king of all the universe do? What did the most powerful being that we'll ever see, what is the one who's going who's to open the books and look for the names and, and have ultimate authority over every human life, what did he do for a garbage heart that came into his presence? The Bible says he took off his robe. He picked up a bowl and he said, Thomas, in his heart, I know you're going to doubt me. I don't want to wash your feet. Peter, you're going to deny you don't know me. But I'm going to wash your feet. Bartholomew, John, oh beloved John, you're going to run away and hide and follow from afar. When I have loved you so much that that's how I call you, John, my beloved. But you will run away from me in my hour of need. But I'll wash your feet. And then he came to Judas. He knelt down and washed his feet. That is what God does with garbage hearts. He knew what was in his heart. But he's, and he even knew the end. But he reached out in grace and love because he wants to save us, not condemn us. He literally said that I have not come to condemn the world. I have come that the world might be saved through me. There's no garbage people, but you all have garbage hearts. Some of you think you're better than other people, but I see you all. You're all belong in the garbage pile. I've come to bring you all home. I've come to save you all. Even Jews. Thank you. Now, 
Did he walk away? Did he betray Jesus even after that last breach? Yes, he did. Did he realize his mistake? Yes. He was disgusted with himself. He went out and hanged himself. And the Acts says very graphically that his body fell, burst open, and it became just a part of the refuse of the wilderness. A place where you bury the criminals. A field of blood. But it was not because Jesus didn't reach out to him. It was not because Jesus says, you're a garbage heart that's not worth my time. Jesus washed his feet. And he said, as I have done, so you need to do. So no, Judas never could overcome the trashiness of his heart. But the perspective of God is, I am willing to save all who are lost. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had a garbage heart. I've had some junk in there. And I know it's junk and you do too. Because you want to hide it from everybody. Put on a smile. You spray some perfume so they won't smell that horrible smell coming from your junk. But God knows it. He knows our frame. He knows that we are but flesh. He's come not only to save us out of sin, but to save us from the effects, from the degeneration of sin that we may know purity and righteousness Holiness and goodness in Jesus Christ alone. There is no garbage, people, but there's also a cure for the garbage heart. Now we have to learn the lesson of Jesus today. We have to know what He said and what He did. And what He has told to us is that He is the one who's ultimately right to judge. He, instead, reaches out to save. So we're in a political season. Has it got you upset yet? Has it made you mad at how the world works? Does it make you uncomfortable because it seems that people hate the way you live and what you believe? And so, I don't want to call myself a redneck, but I guess there's a little in there because you can go hate me and what's my temptation? I'm hate you right back. But I can't be a part of this world. That is the way the world works. I can't deny it. That is the way the world works. The world says there are garbage people not willing to live, and I'm glad when you're gone. There's people that say your, your heart is irredeemable. You can't be good. And they've got labels for you, and I won't get into those. You can find them pretty easily. But what they're saying is you're not worth anything. That is the world. But that's not the church. That is not Jesus. That is not what He's formed. That is not His character. That is not His life. He is even not coming in this hour. I don't know why, but he, Peter said, he is not willing that any should perish. But that all come to repentance. I've done good to them and they've not respected it. I've reached out to them and they've not responded. Well, get a grip. Jesus has been reaching out for 2,000 years and God's been reaching out to people ever since there have been people. Not all of them have responded. And then i got to think about how long has He reached out to me? How many times has He said, no, nope, don't. Don't do that again. Now, why are you acting like that? That's not the way you act. How many times? Oh, just one time is what I want to say. But that would be a lie to pull. I seem to have no problem with God constantly reaching out to me. But I have a problem with me reaching out to others. I don't have my Savior's heart. Not yet. Not to the extent that I need to. Because you see, this is the way. Now, modern reference. Some of you who don't get it, just don't worry about it. But in a modern, in a modern era, well, somewhat since I've been born, um, the franchise Star Wars has, has drawn heavily from religion, including Christianity, which is probably the dominant religion that it has drawn from, and it's become popular, but yet Christianity still gets no credit. No. Okay, whatever, that's, that's the world. But they've always kind of wedded some, some religious things, redemption, um, coming about light versus darkness, those type of things, and it's, it's, it's worked. Well, the latest iteration 
of, of, of a religion, a religious field that's, that's quite popular, simply says, you know, you have to live this way. You don't understand it. You don't question it. They simply say it this way. And it's, it's so, it's so great to me. This, this is happening even though they never call Christ on, line, on air like they do. The word is, and you probably heard it or talked to your kids, this is the way. Acts said about the church is the way. Jesus said of himself, I am the way. So for them to borrow that language says there is a way that you must live. It's the only right way for you to live. Jesus said that like 2,000 years ago. This is the way. I'll, I can poll all of you and say, are there garbage people? No, preacher. But how you live is your real answer. How I live is my real answer. I am pro-life. I believe all life is precious. Lives that are unborn, lives that are born too. Lives that, that I can get along with great, Lives that just rub me like sandpaper. This is the way. Because Jesus said this is the way. So as we interact with people, yes, we can look at these, these, these parents and we can look at their poor parenting skills and say, mm -mm, you shouldn't do stuff like that. But I think we need to evaluate ourselves and say, how am I treating the people that the world, maybe even some of my brothers and sisters say, they're just garbage. They're not worth anything. If I take that tact, then I am not like Jesus at all. I have a garbage heart proclaiming my goodness. Let's not be Judas's church. Let's be Jesus's. Let's be like him in all that we say and do. Because yes, I fully believe all of us have a garbage heart. But there's a Savior that cleanses, restores, and empowers us. To have a heart like his. Would you stand? I've laughed at people I shouldn't have. I've hurt people. I've sinned against people. I've selflessly made my own way out of the content of my own garbage heart. But God saved me. That's my testimony. And he saves me still. So I ask you today as you bow your heads. It's hard to say how to do this, but perhaps you understand my, better than my language can convey. Get in touch with your heart right now. And if it doesn't feel at peace, that's a sign to you something ought to take place in this moment. If you're not free... And saying, God, this is sober. I receive it. No problems. Oh, Brother Harry about there. Condition of our soils in our heart. Oh, it's going to affect how we take this message. There's junk in there. We don't like it. This truth is going to pass away. We'll go on with our life. But if there's some good soil in that heart of yours, oh, this is going to sink in deep. And God's going to produce some fruit out of it. Some goodness, some love, some mercy, some distinct difference than the world. I don't like the way the world's acting right now. There's so much hate. There's so much animosity. There's so much division. But I can promise you, no matter what happens politically, that's not going to change. No matter what happens socially, that's not going to change. No matter what happens on these external things, it's not going to change. But can I tell you, if you will today say, Jesus, I want to have your kind of mindset. I want to have your kind of heart. I want to see people as you do. And I want to have a heart that would rather wash people's feet than judge them. Reaching out to them in Jesus' name and pray for that power that saved me to save them. That can produce great fruit. I didn't really mention it yesterday, but I'll bring it up quickly. We all knew Miss Grace was very blunt. But when she told people the truth, she told them the truth, believe it, it'll make a difference. It's his story that he may have told, but I won't tell it. First time he heard that said to him, he couldn't stand it. Nor her. 
But not because of her unrighteous or meanness, but because she hit the truth and she didn't let him have cover. She just hit him where he lived. But he's a believer now. They testified to me again yesterday. I love that woman with all my heart. Because she didn't judge him, but she loved him enough to give him the truth. And that truth set him free. I believe in the truth of Jesus. I hope you do. We're here, and so I'm inclined to believe we do. But I just want you to be so convinced in the power of Jesus Christ and that God came for everybody that the world would call garbage people. I want you to know God can do something wonderful that's beyond your comprehension. So just believe it. And may He do His work. Let's pray together, whether at the altar or seat. Talk to the Lord about your heart. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to You longing for the grace of God to show to us. God, come touch this preacher because I see in my heart things that are not like You. There's too much anger. There's too much casting off. And dear God, I, I don't think I would say I hate anybody, but God, I'm perfectly willing to exclude them and say they don't matter. And say they're what's wrong with this world. God, we're all what's wrong with this world because to the point we don't look like You, that's falling short of the glory of God. So Father, we all need Your help. Maybe some do need it more than others, but dear God, we all need Your help. Dear God, I, I, I may not have spiritual cancer, but God, if I've got a cut, a wound, something in my life that I'm not willing to treat by Jesus' method, dear God, I could grow spiritual gangrene and it could take me out of this world just like anything else. So God, there is no little problem. We just all need Jesus to come and heal us and to use us. And Father, I want this church with its great heritage of loving people that people were ready to write off. This church literally is a testimony that there's nobody worth overlooking. That they can make a fundamental difference in their family, in their community, in those that thought would never be touched. They are in Jesus' name because they simply believed. Help us to continue that both older and younger in this place. Help us to truly believe your viewpoint. God, there are people that you have loved and that's everybody. Yes, there are people that have ooh, ugly hearts, but there's not one that you can't save, won't save. So Father, help us to believe, help us to live by that belief, and help us to make a difference in your name. By the power of Jesus, by the power of Jesus, make this happen, my Lord Jesus. Bless you.